Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can set up SFTP Go. Um, so this is kind of just setting up like an SFTP server, but it also has a web front end for all your users who may not know how to use SFTP specifically and need to use, um, you know, a HTTPS front end. Um, weirdly enough, I've actually seen a lot of people actually ask for a a, a web front end because they want to just drop file like log into a site drop files there and and that's how it is so this is actually pretty nice because both the web front end and at the sftp protocol all put things in the same directory so if you upload to the web front end you can still grab it via S sftp and vice versa if you upload it via sftp you can grab it from the web front end too so it's pretty nice and it's kind of all packaged together in a docker container so that you can just run it and use it. So let's get started. You can we can see how it works. All right. So first off, we'll need to create the VM that will be hosting this uh, service. So we want to create the DNS um, so that we can resolve it by the DNS name instead of an IP, which will make it easier. So we'll do eighty one, and then we will do uh, SFTP go. A one fifty eight, and then we'll add SFTP go. Then what we'll do here is go back and add it to our Ansible inventory file. That way, Ansible knows when we run it that it is a host that we can hit um, and allow us to do our um, whole, uh, you know, server installation. SFTP go, add SFTP go, which will make it great um, so that we can just essentially get our pre stuff installed for setting up the virtual machine and only need to focus on the actual configuration itself. So what we can do is now go to our AWX instance, which will essentially run our playbooks. So this is kind of like a GUI for running playbooks, which is great. Um, so we can see that it's sunk the control, it's sunk the inventory, so we should be all set here. So we can create a new VM, so we'll use this workflow template that will essentially do multiple job templates back to back. Um, so we'll create a new VM, patch it, install Docker and Docker Compose, but we really only need Docker um, based off of what the documentation is. Um, Docker Compose is nice if we want to convert it to it. Um, and then there will be certs and Nginx for this um, so that we can essentially uh, use HTTPS uh, for the web GUI. So what we'll do is hit launch. We'll name this SFTP go. We'll put in the IP address. So 150, I think eight was the number. Yeah, I'm gonna say it was eight. Um, I was trying to look at the drop downs to see if it would populate. Um, but let's double check it real quick because IP conflicts kind of suck um, if you're dealing with it. Uh, 158. Okay, so we're good with that. And then we'll name this Dragon SFTP Go. And then the proxy address for the web stuff. So we'll do SFTP Go Docker. So there's a Docker installation <laughs> that we can use. So it, they provide a Docker um, image. So we'll be able to run their simple interface. So we can see and look. Um, you know, there's all this other stuff, but really if you're just kind of going with the default, you can run the stock command. So based off of this, I would assume the web GUI will be running on 8080. And then if you're using SFTP, you'd use port 2022. So we'll do 8080 here. So HTTP localhost 8080, hit next and launch. So this will go through, um, and essentially create all the, v create the VM, patch it, install the Docker stuff, create the certs, set up Nginx with the certs, and then we just need to run the Docker container um, and then do all the configurations that we need afterwards. So uh, we'll fast forward the video once this pipeline finishes. All right, now that the VM has finished creating, what we can do is SSH to it. So we're SSH root at SFTP go dot dragon dot local. We'll type in the password to get to it. And then what we can do is run the Docker command here that we'll be using. So we'll just do a uh, script 
so that if we ever have to like restart it or anything, we kind of know what, what we did originally. So we'll paste that in here. So essentially it will run um, essentially the, the name of it. We got port 8080 and port 2022. So let's run this. So chmod plus x start docker. And then we will run the command to start it. But actually, let's double check one thing here. Okay, yeah, it is uh, hyphen D for the detached mode. Um, that's one thing that sometimes people don't look for. Um, and then it runs like, um, oh, and then tag. So uh, in this case, you want to update the tag to actually be latest instead of uh, tag or whatever version you want it to run. So in this case, I'm going to just do latest. So we'll run it with latest. So it'll pull the container down, start it, and then we got the two ports that we can essentially use. So we will uh, essentially use the GUI first. So let's do HTTPS SFTP go dragon dot local. And we can see that we get the initial setup. So let's do admin. Um, we'll type in the password here real quick to create. So we will create an admin and log in. So uh, you can set up two factor if you want. Um, in this case, I won't do it for this video, but you can see how we got all these uh, informations. Let's do a doc theme here real quick. Um, so we got users and groups, virtual folders, active connections, event managers, some IP stuff. So you can do, I think, whitelisting in this case. So you can, um, yeah, blacklisting or whitelisting in case you need to. Um, and then there's some like server configuration things as well. Um, but for the most part, you should be able to um, do it uh, just creating a user and running it. So in this case, let's create a user called Dragon. Uh, we'll type in a password here. Uh, we won't require the password change because we specifically configured it, but the password change is nice, especially when you make a you know custom password for a user and they, they should change it on the first day. Um, public keys for SFTP authentication as well, um, but we won't do that. Um, and then the rest of this, I think we'll leave as default. You can change where the storage is, but we'll just leave it on the path uh, where it is for that user. So we'll hit save. And then essentially we can do both the web GUI and we can do SFTP with, with what it is. So what we can show you here is We'll open this in an incognito tab. Let's so keep it go. Drag it up local. So you can see that we're on the web client versus the web admin. So web admin is for the admin login, which we were at. Web client is for your user's login. So that's one thing to note that can be kind of confusing when I first looked at it. So we'll log in as Dragon. And you'll see that essentially you get a different interface that is here are the directories to upload and here are the shares and stuff like that. So what we can do is upload a file. So like we'll upload like this this uh, JPEG that is, uh, a, I think it was my my channel pick. Um, so you can see that it is here now. The other thing that we can do is say for example, uh, you can now do SFTP. So SFTP, and then we'll do O port equals 2022. And then we will do dragon at localhost because I'm running it on the same machine, but you could replace this with like sftpgo.dragon.local or whatever your public IP, uh, public domain name would be if you were hosting this publicly. And you can see that it will prompt you for the host key. So we'll accept and then the password for the user. And then you can see we actually did successfully log into SFTP Go. Um, we can do an ls and you can see that this file also exists. So essentially the home direct, the directories for the user um, exist here. Um, and you can see it, it's just based off of slash. So if we would create more folders on either, so like for example, um, I don't know if this works. Okay, it does work. Um, I can some, sometimes the SFTP prompt you have different commands that won't work with everything. Um, and so you can see if we reload this page, test now shows up. So essentially, regardless if you upload it in the web client or upload it via SFTP, the photos are in sync. So this is super nice for users that 
are like, hey, I just can't SFTP because FileZilla, WinSCP, or like something else you can't use in a corporate network, um, which is also another interesting case because those do get blocked uh, because they don't, you know, it's just a corporate policy. Most likely you can't transfer files out um, to other places because you don't want sensitive data going to the wrong place for most users. So, um, but uh, for HTTPS, this works out pretty well for those that you need to cover both cases where you want the user to be able to hit like a web client or and hit an SFTP uh, prompt. So, um, so this was pretty fun, and I mean the the client looks pretty good, um, and there really isn't too much to it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, feel free to leave me a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.